Por mim, o Gerardo Sobralha, Fustain, going to Rio de Janeiro. From Rio, Glover takes a plane to Bogota. Coyotes enter the picture. Migrants seek out locals who know the terrain. Black market guides known as coyotes. Oh, there are always dangers, you know, you in the hand of, you don't know who is going to cross the desert. Migrants trust these people with their lives, although they know nothing about them. They can steal from you, they can... Yeah, yeah. they can do whatever, I man, you don't know. The most dangerous part of the trip is the passage between Colombia and Panama. It's known as the Darien Gap. It's a 150-kilometer jungle wilderness that no sane person would dare enter. It's a lot of crisscrossing rivers, and so we've got about seven more hours to go on foot. Nobody knows how many died out here. Are you scared about this trip? Very, very scared. But I don't have any choice. Evelyn tells me she was a hairdresser in her home country, Cameroon. Now, she's in the fiercest of jungles. Once you make your way through the Darien Gap, you're gonna go through Panama and Costa Rica, most often by bus. Bus, train, yeah, a lot of bus. If you ask me back then, like, where you are right now, I don't know. I just say, no, I'm going to America. In Nicaragua, you'll start encountering the first legs of migrant caravans. Caravans are essentially large group of migrants walking their way up to the U.S. I have 16 years old. I left my mom and six years old. I don't know, I feel the desire to be a hero and to get them forward. Every night, they come together, feeling safer in a large group. And where will they sleep? Their shoes are worn from the walk. Many have already been on the road for 500 miles. Tonight, the migrant caravan is growing. A massive migrant caravan is winding its way towards the U.S. One of the largest caravans ever recorded in 2022 had more than 15,000 people. 70% of those were women and children. Of course, local populations are disrupted by caravans. Protests are frequent. They're here to use us. The government is spending a lot of money on them already, although there are many poor people here. They're not migrants. They're invaders. Without urgent action, protests like this could lead to an all-out attack on migrants. Police forces in Honduras, Guatemala, and Mexico will often try to stop and dismantle the caravan. The moment Guatemalan police broke up a caravan of thousands of people from Honduras. One of the reasons is the city being ill-equipped to deal with the influx of people. Their week-long trek through Central America from Honduras, one of the poorest countries in the region, through Guatemala, has brought them here to the gates of Mexico. Their dream is to keep going and get to the United States. Many in this convoy or caravan are upset that they're being portrayed by some as the worst of humanity. <laughs> now covering migration, I've never seen anything quite like this. This is a humanitarian crisis. It's not just a humanitarian crisis. It's a full-on industry. Sometimes also the Mexican cartels who charge a fee to the migrants. It's well known. They make millions out of it. Says he traffics people in this corridor controlled by the Sinaloa cartel, which was formerly headed by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. What do you charge for your services? Cuatro y cinco mil dólares por ponerlos en la frontera de Tijuana, Tijuana, Estados Unidos. Cada mes llevo entre 21 
So on average, that's 4,500 times 21, 95K per month times 12 for $1.1 million per year for one operation. The total profits of this industry is $13 billion. And here's the crazy part. But after it was getting dangerous because of the, the drug dealers, you know, the, the cartels yeah. start like actually you know, getting people, make those people like some slave. It was it was little crazy stories going on. So Mexican cartels will often force migrants to smuggle drugs across the borders. So you might leave your country a non-citizen, citizen, but you arrive to America as a criminal. According to the DEA, agents are already starting to see a small rise in cases of migrants being enlisted to carry drugs like these across the border. And they actually tried to force Glover to do it. But they're like, hey, my, hey, amigo, you bring this bag for us, like, you know, nice and simple. And you, I say, no, I, uh, I have my bag. I'm paying $9,000 to cross this day, man. I need to carry stuff for you. I don't know what it was. It could be drugs, though. You know, that's what I, I, that's why I didn't take. I say, I'm not taking it. So finally comes the time to cross to the U.S. The most common access points are Rio Grande Valley, Del Rio, El Paso, Tucson, and Yuma. Glover crossed to San Diego from Tijuana. How did you cross the border? Did you uh, walking, yeah. Wow. Walking. How long did that take? Uh, maybe five hours, four or five hours. Jeez. I stayed in Tijuana for eight days, waiting for the fog to come so the helicopter and immigration people wouldn't see us. So they come down one night and they say, let's go. Everyone goes together. Yeah, everybody go. How do you know if there's border patrol around here? The people watching, they let me know. So there's people watching us right now? Yes. It was like a swamp, you know? We gotta run, we gotta swim. What we gotta do here, you know? One in 30 people. A mom pushing the kids, you know? I heard a couple of people die crossing the, the river, you know? It's tough, you know. So it's it's like uh, you were recommended for no one, you know. It's a risk of life. For... <laughs> Reality is like you can try a different way, you know. It's actually once you cross to San Diego that Glover faced the scariest moment. They say we're not gonna let you guys out. His guide owed money to the coyotes, so they decided to take all the migrants hostage. It lasted 12 days. We thought we were going back, you know, to Brazil. 43 days after he left his home, Glover arrives in Connecticut. Of all places, why Danbury? Over here, they have a lot of landscaping. There is more opportunity the way I come from. I was like, oh my God, this country, I can be a professional athlete, you know? I can be a boxer. The next day, I was already in the gym lifting weight. I was just lifting. 